With so many different selection tools in Photoshop, it can sometimes be hard to make up your mind as to which tool you should use for what type of selection. And in most cases, you'll end up using multiple tools in order to complete a selection, which is entirely normal and what you should come to expect. Now, when working with a photograph that has blocks of solid colors, densities, or hard outlines, such as the image that you're currently viewing, selections can be made relatively quickly without any fuss. Now, a tool that I like to use under these types of circumstances is the magic wand tool, which can shorten the selection process as you're about to learn. Now you'll find the magic wand tool located near the top of the tools menu, about fourth down from the top. Now you'll also notice by holding down on the actual magic wand tool icon that you'll see a drop down menu that will appear. Now it also allows you to select the quick selection tool. Now the quick selection tool could be described as a simplified version of the magic wand tool as it acts in very much the same way except it has less controls. So what I'd like to do is show you how we can use the quick selection tool and then compare that against the additional control provided by the magic wand tool. So I'm going to select the quick selection tool. Now you can also select uh, W on your keyboard in order to bring up this particular tool. Now the first thing you'll notice is the options bar. Now as you've seen in previous um, selection videos, you'll have uh, a very similar um, options with regards to adding, uh, starting a selection, adding a selection, adding to a selection and also subtracting from a selection. So the first brush you'll see is to create a new selection. So you, you turn that on essentially if you want to create a new selection. If you want to add to the selection that you've already created, what you then do is actually select the add to selection icon uh, of the actual brush itself. And then you also have the subtract from selection here. Now, beside the actual uh, subtract from selection icon, you have the brush sizes. Now, this will allow you essentially to choose the size of the brush, the hardness of the brush, the spacing of the brush, and then it will also allow you to choose the angle at which the brush will actually operate at, the roundness of the brush. Now, by roundness, I mean if you'd like, you can actually set it in uh, set the roundness so that it could be an oval-shaped brush instead of a um, perfect circle. And then you also have some size options down the bottom here. Now, with the size options, note that you're probably not going to actually utilize these unless, of course, you have an additional piece of uh, computer equipment such as a pressure-sensitive um, tablet where you have a pen that you can actually draw on the tablet in order to actually uh, make a selection instead of using a mouse. Now, there are some options here when you actually have uh, such a a, temp, uh, a tablet such as a stylist or Wacom tablet, you can choose to actually set some options for the pen pressure and also for the stylus wheel. Now you'll notice here that they're actually displaying a little warning sign and there's actually no options that are showing up and that's primarily because I'm using a mouse and I don't actually have a uh, stylus tablet attached to this computer at this point in time. So along with the actual brush size options, you can have, uh, there, there are a couple of different checkbox options here. You have sample all layers. Now sample all layers will essentially just allow you to be able to um, select colors from all visible layers, as opposed to um, selecting from just one active layer. And in this particular example, I have one um, layer, which is the locked background layer, as you can see here. So it's going to make the selection based on that. But if I had multiple layers, you could have that selected and then it would make the selection from all the layers. Or you could turn it off and then just select from the active layer that you actually have highlighted in the layers panel. Now, beside sample all layers, you have auto enhance. Now, auto enhance simply will reduce the roughness and uh, blockiness of the selection boundary that is actually created when you make a selection. 
So to show you how to um, use the quick selection tool, it's really simple. All you need to do is once you've selected a brush size and you've selected say new selection here, all you need to do is just drag on the area that you actually want to make a selection from like that and it's instantly created a selection around this Brisbane City sign except I've got a couple of areas here that I don't um, that it's actually selected past the point at which um, the sign actually ends so in order to remove those I'm just going to reduce the actual brush size um, I'll just zoom in a little bit here to make it easier to tell what I'm selecting jump back here and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down uh, Alt on the keyboard or the Option key uh, on a Mac. So it's Alt on a PC or the Option key on a Mac. And I'm just going to select the areas outside of which the sign that have been selected. So I'm subtracting them from the selection. Um, so as you can see here, it's really, really simple to create a selection and create a selection that's pretty, pretty close to what you actually want with regards to um, solid colors or blocks of density that um, don't have too much detail in them when you're actually uh, in, in them to actually confuse the tool and so I'll just make a slight correction here to this so as you can see it's done a relatively good job of actually making a selection around this entire sign which is essentially what I wanted now the Magic Wand tool actually provides a lot more options than the auto, uh, oh, sorry, than the quick selection tool. So let's now compare making this selection using the Magic Wand tool as opposed to the quick selection tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, go up to select and we'll just go to deselect. So that's just un done the selection that I've actually made to that sign and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and um, hold down the mouse on the quick selection tool and I'm going to select the magic wand tool and what I'll also do is I'll quickly just zoom out there so we have the entire sign and what you'll notice now with the magic wand tool up in the top left hand corner of the options bar um, you'll have uh, series of icons that you've seen um, that are uh, prominent in other selection tools and they just allow you to select a new selection, uh, add to a selection, subtract from a selection and also intersect from a selection. Um, so you have those options which are pretty much standard with all the other selection tools as I mentioned. Now the thing you'll notice here is you have a tolerance option. Now tolerance simply will determine uh, the color range of the selected pixels and by that I mean if you enter a value of uh, between 0 and 255 you'll notice that lower values select fewer colors but colors that it does select are very similar in value to the original pixel. Uh, or the pixel you uh, originally clicked on. Whilst higher values will actually select a broader range of colors that make up a selection. So to show you what I'm talking about, let's first, instead of using 32, let's, let's bump it up to say 200. So that's almost you know near the top, it goes to 255, and let's just click on this area. So what you'll see now is that it's actually created the selection greater than the actual sign. So if I quickly zoom out from this, you'll notice that it's actually included a lot more areas uh, of the image than just the sign. So as I, as I mentioned, higher values will actually create broader, uh, broader selections based on more uh, pixel values, whilst a lower tolerance value of back to 32, for example, and we'll just quickly deselect that, We'll select this sign again will actually create a um, more detailed selection with uh, more specific to the original pixel that you actually clicked on and in this case it's made a selection around the entire sign and it's excluded all other areas so it's, it's much more uh, controlled and detailed and that's essentially what most of the time that you're actually going to want when using the magic wand tool. Now there are several other options with the magic wand tool. 
First you have uh, anti-alias. Now anti-alias simply uh, creates a selection with a smoother edge as opposed to having a really defined coarse um, edge that you, you'll be able to notice the, um, the coarseness of the actual pixels around the selection. What it's actually doing is it's sort of smoothing out those edges so it looks nice and natural. Now next to anti-alias we have contiguous. Now contiguous if I'm pronouncing that correctly, um, simply will allow you to select uh, the adjacent areas using the same colors. It will actually select only the adjacent areas using the same colors where you have originally clicked. So in this case, I've clicked on this sign. It's picked up all the adjacent uh, areas based on the original color that I actually selected to create that selection. Now, if contiguous is actually turned off, then the selection will be made using all the pixels in the image using the same color values that have been originally selected or clicked on. So let's just demonstrate that. So I'll deselect this selection. We'll just go and select, uh, uncheck contiguous, and then I'll click roughly around the same area again. And what you'll notice now is it's actually created the selection, but it's included um, the outside uh, face of this building, the framework. Now, as you can see here, the framework has a lot of grays in it that are very similar to the grays in this sign. So it's actually made the selection based on the entire image, based on very similar color values. Now, if I was to turn contiguous back on, deselect this, select around the same area again, you'll notice that it's only selected the sign, which is what you're going to want in um, most cases and, and, and most types of selections. You're not really going to want to make the selection based on the entire image. You're just going to make, uh, make it or want to make it based on uh, a local area uh, from where you've originally clicked. Now, also beside contiguous, as I mentioned with the quick selection tool, we have sample all layers. And just as I uh, mentioned earlier, by selecting sample all layers, it'll actually make the selection based on all the layers in your layer panel, as opposed to if you have it turned off, it then will only make the selection based on the active layer that you have selected in your layers panel. So that's the uh, magic wand tool. Uh, compared against the quick selection tool. They're very similar in nature except for the magic wand tool has a lot more control with regards to actually making more detailed selections whereas the quick selection tool can be very useful just for making broad selections where you're not overly fussed on getting all the individual um, details within your image.